Today, we're going to tackle the question of how we can render two different materials using the same colors using Captain America from Simon's Marvel United. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. Today we're going to tackle a useful concept which you can apply for every miniature that you are painting. We are going to talk about how we can render different types of surfaces today. Matte and glossy surfaces. And the model that we are using to demonstrate this is none other than Captain America. Using this model, I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how you can save time while painting your miniatures. As well as even more clearly communicate the types of surfaces to your audience. In summary, the key concept of what I'm going to talk about today would be the distribution of value and saturation. As seen on Captain America, many of his body parts and his armor panels are of the same color, blue, red and white. However, I would say that the finish is vastly different in all these surfaces. So for Captain America, his body armor is matte and maybe satin and I would say that the finish on his shield is extremely glossy and high shine. And because of this, the way that we are going to be rendering these two surfaces would be vastly different. So I hope you guys stay on to the end of this video because I'll be sharing some potential pitfalls and material differences as well as how you can retain these differences on the surfaces that you are painting. So to begin with, for matte and satin surfaces, I would say that most of the value and saturation tend to span out from the mid-tone. So you have a central mid-tone and then it spans out from there in terms of value and saturation. So as you can see on the picture right here on Captain America's helmet, you can see that the value distribution isn't that extreme. Most of the value tends to center around the mid-tone and has a similar saturation. As you are observing right here, I want to bring your attention to the highlights on Captain America's helmet. So right here, there isn't any extreme highlighting on Captain America's helmet. Of course, if you want to add on a glint, because the lighting is really strong, you can add on a glint. However, the value wouldn't be as extreme as what you will see in the glossy surfaces. In contrast to this, let's look at the glossy surfaces of Captain America's shield in this picture right here. So in this picture right here, we can see a greater representation of the highlight values. As you can see, the highlight values is taken about a third or more of this surface because glossy surfaces are fundamentally miniature mirrors and they reflect a lot more light. Secondly, you can see that the shadows are a lot deeper also because as I said, glossy surfaces are miniature mirrors. They also reflect the lack of light from the shadow areas, hence the much deeper and darker shadows. Thirdly, because they are miniature mirrors itself, they also reflect atmospheric and reflected light. Thus, the reflected light, as you can see right here, is a lot stronger in comparison to the matte surfaces. So now that I've spoken enough about the concept, let's get to demonstrating these concepts on Captain America. To paint Captain America, we're going to need just a few colors and these are the colors that we'll be using to paint Captain America. So how I will be structuring this video would be we're going to talk about the base coats which will use exactly the same colors. Thereafter, we're going to talk about how we're going to vary the value distribution on the models and you can see the effect at the end. So let's get these colors ready and let's get base coating Captain America right now. So this is the base coat stages. For the blue, we're using Vallejo model color blue. For the white, I'm using Vallejo model color off-white. For the red, I base coated in Games Workshop Mephiston Red. As for the browns, I'm currently using Vallejo model color beige brown. And for the light greys and metal parts, I'm going to be coating it in Vallejo model color pale blue grey. Alright, so that's the base coating done. And let's get started on the rest of the model. Now that base coating is done, let's move on to paint his body. Most of his body tends to be matte or satin surfaces. That's why I'm going to use the body to demonstrate the matte surfaces. I'm going to give you guys some pointers for painting matte surfaces right now. So for the matte surfaces, the value distribution is Number 1. Mostly mid-tones Number 2. No intense highlights Number 3. No intense shadows And number 4. Just mild reflected lights on this so with this tips out of the way, let's get layering Captain America and his body right now. Okay, 
So right here, we're going to start off with the initial layers of blue. I'm currently mixing in a little bit of sky blue from scale 75 along with a little model color blue. So at this point in time, I'm taking very close reference to the box art painted by Big Chow Creatives and I'm just blocking in the shapes and trying to make sure that the blue areas are as accurate as possible. So for the red highlights, I'm painting this in with Games Workshop Evil Sun Scarlet. While the shapes might seem a little bit weird, just believe in the process because if you continue to believe in this process, gradually you can see why these shapes are happening. So what I can say is that these shapes are here because they signify places that are in the light and they are not cast shadows. Similarly, I'm also going to be doing this for his forearm guard where he has a little bit of red decorations there. Okay, so now that's the red done. I'm going to be using a little bit of Vallejo model color pale blue grey mixed in with a little bit of Vallejo model color dark grey and I'm painting in some slight cast shadows on the white areas. I'm also going to be using these colors for the stars. And now gradually, I'm going to be creating this highlight on his head. So this is a volumetric highlight. I'm going to be gradually adding in scale 75 sky blue. Gradually adding more and more sky blue into this, which sort of contour his helmet in a more aggressive way. So now gradually adding in a little bit more sky blue. As you can see right here, I'm really not making a large deviation from the mid-tone. Even the high highlights, as you can see on this model, tend to be a deviation of blue. There is no high levels of values and I also did not make any desaturation to these highlights. So, in short, trying to do my best to keep the colors pretty close to the mid-tones. So as for the face, similarly, I'm going to be using Scale 75 Indian Shadow. And I'm placing in the shadows over the skin tone, which has been base coated in Scale 75 Basic Flash. Just gradually adding in a little bit of Leo model color tail skin to highlight the flash a little bit. So as you can see right here, all the concepts that we spoke about previously about matte and satin surfaces are applied on the front figure because as you can see, there is no intense highlight at all. The intense highlights have all been kept for the glossy areas and I'm trying my best to keep the values in a certain value range so that I don't make these surfaces appear too glossy. Or they are not glossy, I still want to attain a certain degree of volumetric highlighting and shading so that I can educate the viewer about the forms and shapes of the miniature, especially his helmet, his chest piece. And now because the face is only slightly sculpted, I'm going to be contouring the face with more and more Vallejo model color pale skin. So now I'm just picking up the little details with scale 75 sky blue. So in this stage, what I'm doing is I'm just really trying to edge highlight and trying to pick up the details and yeah, trying to make sure that the surfaces look satin rather than gloss. So just using some chocolate brown here to contour the shadows of the leather straps and there we have it. So in this final stage, I'm going to be using Chimera Violet mixed in with just a little bit of Chimera Red. And right here, I'm going to be using this to contour the shadows. This black lining process really makes all the lines look even more sharp and makes this miniature look super defined. 
Now with the final edge highlights for the blue, I'm gradually adding in just pure scale 75, sky blue, and sharpening all the details and creating a more intensive volumetric highlighting, especially near the sharp edges. These edges can be found on the chest, the shoulder, and his helmet. Now moving on to the leather. Of course, leather is going to be slightly satin or matte. It's not going to be gloss. I'm gradually adding in a little bit of Vallejo Model Color Pale Sand into Vallejo Model Color Beige Brown. And this is allowing me to really edge highlight and sharpen out the details. And I'm really taking a lot of caution not to push the highlights too much. So right here, I'm just going to be adding in a little bit of the green glow that Big Child Creatives have always created. Currently, I'm just adding in AK Generation 3 Smoke Black along with AK Generation 3 Blue Green. And these will be the intermediate shadows for the green glow. Now that we have rendered the matte surfaces on Captain America's body, let's focus on the high gloss, high shine surface on the shield. To render the high gloss, high shine surface on the shield, I'm going to give you some pointers to render these surfaces. There's going to be a wide value distribution across the entire range of this exposed material. There are going to be intense highlights, intense shadows, and remember to add on a little bit of reflected light because, as I said before, Glossy surfaces are fundamentally just miniature mirrors. So with these concepts out of the way, let's render the high shine surface of Captain America's shoe right now. So right now, the reds have already been base coated in Games Workshop Mephiston Red. I'm currently using Games Workshop Evil Sun Scarlet to pick on bigger highlights. As you can see right here, the method of highlighting is a lot more liberal because I want to make sure that the mid-tone level is really pushed up to the next level. As you can see with the blue, the mid-tone, which I mixed in blue with sky blue, tends to only occupy, say for example, the lead up 30%. However, I'm going to be pushing this even further, maybe trying to even to hit like 50% of the exposed area. And right here, I'm going to be using Mephiston Red mixed in with a little bit of Scale 75 Black Black for the intense black shadows. Right here, I'm also going to be creating some intense shadows of blue using Vallejo Model Color Blue mixed in with a little bit of Scale 75 Black Black. As for the white here, I'm really going to be pushing the highlights slightly further. I'm going to be using pure white mixed in with a little model color of white here and creating the highlight that is aligned with the Games Workshop Evil Sun Scarlet that we have created. So right here, gradually adding in a little model color Emerald Red. What I'm trying to do is I'm really trying to push up the saturation and the value. Trying to keep the entire lighting situation coherent for the shield. Okay, so right here, I'm just gradually adding in a little bit of blue model color light flash and I'm just placing in this mid highlight. So at this point of time, the shoe is at a point where you look satin. Okay, so right now, I'm going to show you guys how I place the highest highlights and you can just multiply this and make this shoe even more reflective. Currently right here, I'm going to be using AK Gen 3 Deep Red to place in the mid-tones. I find this AK Gen 3 very, very opaque and vibrant even when dry. Okay, gradually I'm adding in a little bit of AK Gen 3 Dead Red and to increase the value and trying to create another shine on this shoe. So gradually, I'm also adding in AK Gen 3 Luminous Flash. And in this, I am creating yet another highlight. However, at this point of time, I'm very careful to make sure that this highlight does not 
overpower the existing strong highlight that we've created on the left hand side of the shield. There we have it, that's Captain America done and dusted and this is the final result. So as you can see on this, Captain America's shield is really glossy and the helmet is really matte. However, both are using the same colours, the same colour ranges. So remember to vary your types of material on your miniatures the next time you paint. So thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. Remember, if you want to support the channel, just give us a like and subscribe. Keeps our lights on, keeps me producing videos like this. And if you can, want to support the channel even further, head on to our Patreon and become a Patreon today. And yep, you get a whole year of painting content that I have been producing for the past year. And I'd like to thank you for watching all the way to the end. See you in the next Marvel United painting video. See you guys.